We're back on the Ford 555. We're gonna try to get this whole engine, all this put back together, nose cones and counterweights today, and hopefully we can get it fired up and see what's going on with it. If you remember, we had a leak in the radiator and area diesel service hooked us up with a brand new radiator and they solved our water pump problem. Let me show you what they did. So if you remember, this has the 201 in it, but it's a transplant 201 from something else. We thought it was another tractor, could be a generator. Who really knows? We've had problems finding parts with it from the get-go. They sent down a water pump as well to replace the one that was in there, and it wasn't the correct one. It was correct for what they specced off this backhoe, but not correct for that engine. They did end up tracking it down and found out that the water pump that we needed for this particular 201 is obsolete. We couldn't find it anywhere, and they looked everywhere so what they did is they took a new water pump that had the same bolt pattern and the same casting and all of that this part the casting they found one with the casting and the bolt holes that match up in the same water pump that needs to be the problem was my pulley wasn't the same it wasn't matching up with the way this engine is they took the old pulley off of my old water pump and well, I tell you what, if you look in the description, there's a link to their YouTube channel, Area Diesel Service, and there's a video of them doing it. So you can just watch it there. But they took an obsolete part, they took a new one and an old one, they put the two together, and we should have a water pump that works now. But we're going to find out by the end of this video. So here's where it goes. We had that stuffed in there from when we were pressure washing. Looks like I need a razor blade to scrape that off, maybe grab an SOS pad. We'll go ahead and clean this up and make a new gasket for that thermostat housing as well. bolts here just go take a water wheel on a drill clean those up a little bit if you got a bench top version of this it works a little bit better better than what it was and then same thing on these little ones there's one two three four little ones that hold together then those bigger ones run through this into the engine block. So I'll get these cleaned up next. These have a torque spec, but I think it's going to be easier to torque it all down when it's actually on the engine block. So we'll go ahead and set it up there at the gasket and get those four zipped in there. Well, now that's a real mystery. How come it lines up from the back side, but not? Try the old hammer drill. Interesting. Very interesting. I don't want to mess my threads up, but these are all loose. Got a little movement. Let's give him a little tap. I don't want to mess my threads up, but a little. Just see. I don't like that. 
that. Explain that to me. Why? Why from this side, like a champ? Is oh, I think this hole is just like a touch smaller diameter wise than the original casting. If you look on the shoulder there, see where it's getting the wear, which means the threads are clearing down here. When we're hitting, we're not hitting the threads, we're just on that shoulder there. So maybe I just need to clean up these bolts a little bit better and then maybe they'll go in there for us. Now it's been about five minutes. I ended up chucking it in the drill. Yeah, I think we're slowly getting to where we need to be on that shoulder. Well, there's one. Three more to go. Probably ought to put the washer on there, though. Number two. Number three. Beautiful. Let's see if we can actually get it on the backhoe now. Just not enough clearance to get a socket there. So. All right, so all those four are kind of snugged up. Hit these, snug these up. There'll be one more right there. And let me get the torque wrench out. All right, so the pump to pump housing, we're doing it 20. And then the pump housing to the block, and the pump to the block, do 25. 20, 25. We'll just have to guess with the wrench. I'll get my elbow dialed in here. No doubt my elbow will definitely click at some point. Uh, click. Okay. All right. Fluid seeps out of it. We know it's not right. All right, so in theory, the water pump is on. Looks like the pulley lines up with those belts. The tensioner and this bottom pull is pretty good. Before we put the fan on, I want to go ahead and clean up the thermostat housing. I got to make a new gasket for that. And I want to go ahead and get the alternator put on and these belts routed everywhere they're supposed to be.
Let's go ahead and get the AC pump fastened. Everything right here is going to be behind the fan. I want to go ahead and get hooked up. So I'm going to, isn't this, that Doug is getting anxiety from this. I, I know he is. I, I know it bothers him that I have to uh, have one, two, three socket sets to have a full set. But you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Whatever. So we're going to make a new gasket for this thermostat housing. This gasket material just comes in rolls. They do make different kinds for different fluids. So if you do decide to take this on, make sure you get what you need. This is good for coolant, which is what we need. But I just like to start by cutting a piece that's somewhat close to the size that I need. Flatten her out just a little bit. Flatten her out a little bit. If you know you're going to be making this stuff the next day, if you roll it out and smash it between two books or two boards, that way it's flat for you when you're going to be using it. And it does come in sheets too, as well. And you just take it. I just try, try to mark out as a start, just so I got a general idea. Oh, it's going to be, this isn't going to work on this plastic table. Hold on, we got to get something more solid. I was worried about that having too much bounce out there, not being able to do it, but I was also worried about the lighting in here. Anyway, just kind of work your way around. I try not to smack it too hard. Obviously, you don't want to deform the metal. Good. Then we'll go around the outer edge. On the outer edge, I'll use the flat side of the hammer. And then I use that peen side again to find those bolt holes. All right, so the gasket's not perfect, but uh, it'll do the trick just fine. Clean the bolts up or the threads up a little bit. Put a little oil on them so they spin in easy for me. I just got a little bit of just a touch of grease there to help hold that uh, thermostat in place until it's kind of where it needs to be. And I'm sitting here looking at it. This belt is routed wrong, but I think we're just going to take it all the way off anyway, and I'll explain that in a minute. Let me get this. Round up, just like that. Let me run these in. There we go. So this belt here, I was staring at this. I was sitting here staring at this while I was cleaning that, that face off. I was like, there's no way that's routed right. This did not go around the water pump. It went around here and around this idler pulley, which this idler pulley was seized up until I spun it a little bit, and it's oh, still not. It, it, listen, it's not great, and I don't want to put a belt on it, honestly. The only thing this belt does is run the AC. Not too concerned about that at this moment in time, and I don't even know if that AC compressor works. So what I'm going to do... What I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut this and pull it out and just have it out of the way. There will be a time in the future where we'll try to get this air conditioning working. And at that point in time, we'll address this busted pulley. Can you see all the... We'll address that busted pulley. We'll see if this AC compressor works and we'll go from there. 
There's supposed to be another belt that goes right here, though. This shouldn't be there. Remember? That's not right. I was right about being wrong, which still counts about being right. There's another belt that goes here up to the alternator. And I don't know where the heck I put this. So we got to go on a scavenger hunt. I just, I don't feel like problem solving the air conditioner at this moment in time. It's almost like I use it to cut rocks on a regular basis. There we go. It took me a minute, but I found it. It's up here on the intake. Where else would you store it? I don't know. Well, we'll see if we can't... Uh... See if we can't spin this belt back off. And the net's got to go on first, like that. And it should roll around for us. Yeah, there it goes. Well, that's good. And that's where it needs to be. Checks out. It makes sense. Oh, we'll just throw that one on the ground and get it later. Oop, come here. So here's the new alternator. This other one, they couldn't get it to test right. You can see there's quite a bit of corrosion and connection issues on side the alternator itself. And I may send this one off and see if a local felder can't rebuild it just so I got a spare. But I did go ahead and pick up a new one. Now this bolt that goes right here, this one had options, one, two, three. This one just has the middle one, which is the one I was using, so that works out fine. That one fits there like it's supposed to. The problem we're gonna have this bolt, which goes right there. There's a little difference. So we're going to have to... Uh, well, I guess we're just going to have to drill her out, bud. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. All right. All right, so I ran through my options. So the best way that I have to drill this, you know, perfectly straight without completely destroying this high-tech piece of equipment. And, uh, you know, everything I came up with, all my other options seem kind of inferior. This seems like the best, worst option. <laughs> Can't imagine a better option. Oh, we're actually looking pretty good. I just keep looking down the hole and making sure like I'm still centered on it one. That's how I'm gauging straight up and down. Or whatever. Because it's got to be pretty daggone perfect otherwise the bolt's going to be trying to pull it one way or the other. You know? But it looks good. That should do it. Well, let's see if the bolt fits. Has anybody seen the bolt? It's not this one, that's that's the little one. Where's the other one? Oh dear. Found it. Fingers crossed. Yeah. I mean, she's a little. Just make sure the shoulder's got clearance. Oh, it's too thick for the shoulder. I need rolls of emery cloth for. This stuff works great for things like this. All right, run what you brung though, bud. What are you like a professional or something, bud? No, no, clear, clearly not. But we're gonna make it work. 
That's for sure. All right, let's get that thing on there. It's gonna be walking right in the way, isn't it? Oh no, we got her. We got her started there. Yeah, there you just drop every drop it all. Who needs it? Okay. Okay. She's a little snuffy. Maybe all right. Okay. Don't want to get crazy with that because that's all aluminum. Definitely don't want to break any of that. Oh, trigger got stuck. All right. Now next we got a bracket right here. It's for the exhaust we'll go ahead and put on and then we'll go ahead and get uh, we'll get this secured even though we're not going to run it. Probably ought to attach it. This real fancy fine piece of artistry right here is what we're talking about. It goes right behind here. We're just going to We'll just set that out of the way. Goes between these two. I'm gonna go ahead and set this AC compressor back up here. Get that bolted back on. Go ahead and put this fan on here next. You can see, see that? I'm just putting it back on the way it came off. That's all I'm doing. Where's the holes? Here they are. It's starting to almost look like an engine again. Oh dear, fellas. Move that enough to get the little impact there. Now remember, the radiator came from Area Diesel Service as well. They kind of specialize in like fuel injectors for diesels, turbos, injection pumps, that kind of thing. But if it's attached to a diesel engine, those fellows know how to track it down. And you saw in the water pump, they know how to take an obsolete part and make it fit your machine. So on this machine, they have these, it's almost like a carriage bolt. I'd say it is a carriage bolt. It just uh, clips into that bracket at the bottom. And then those run right there, that one and that one, and you have to put a nut on from the bottom side. But I want to get these bolts cleaned up. The easier I can get these things threaded on, the easier it's going to be for me. The easier you make it on yourself, the easier it is. Very profound. I know. I know. Man, that one's real bad. Look how bad that one is. Maybe I should have just got some new ones, huh? Oh, definitely better than what it was. It's not brand new, but it'll do. It's got these little rubber washers to go right there. And we'll put a little. Oh, great shot. Great shot. Oh, no. Let's pull it back out and try that again. I lost one of the bolts. I was afraid that's gonna happen. And we'll just we'll just balance it on my arm like I'm delivering a pizza here. And then reach down and grab that bolt. Oh yeah. Where'd the rubber washers go? 
Where'd the rubber washers go? Oh, they fell off long before the operation even started. on it, bud. Okay. Yeah, they were over under the table. They didn't even... They didn't have anything to do with this operation. I can't see anything. Okay, just like that, easy peasy. All right. There's a couple oil cooler lines right here. That goes on. To Passenger side, if you want to call it that, and then this one right here goes on the left hand side. Let's see if we can't get them on there by hand the best we can. They are uh, JIC fittings, so no tape or nothing. Just got to kind of get them lined up, which is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. But once we get them started, they shouldn't be bad. A little bit better view over here. This one's got to go right to there. Right there. And we just got to get her tightened up. Last thing I want to do real quick this evening is try to get that fan shroud on because I'm pretty sure it should have went on before this step. And uh, well, I want to I want to figure it out. I want to see if I'm right. Yeah, I think I should have put this on first. Otherwise, how do I? How do I get it on there? Huh? You can't. It's got to go on first. I think, though, what I can do is just loosen those nuts on the bottom, tilt this forward, and then slide it on. So I'm going to try to do it anyway, but uh, I'm going to do that in the morning because the family just pulled up to the house. That's, that's uh, you know, that's my sign. It's quit time. A little bit of a late start. Kids' school got canceled because we, uh, we got an ice storm last night. A little bit of ice. That's neat. That's neat. That's going to make things fun today. That's for like like my mental health sake of things. I get this tarp off. We're gonna get a little fire started over here, just so I can look over and it looks warm somewhere. You know. <laughs> so I'm just gonna loosen these radiator bolts on the bottom. Those two down there. Those two nuts, and see if we can't lean it forward enough with it loose to get that shroud on. So I'm just going to take this fan off and get it out of the way. The worst part about not knowing what you're doing is not knowing what you're doing. That's the one thing. I'll tell, I'll tell you that. If you're new to this and you're thinking about taking something like this on, just be mentally prepared. You're going to have to undo everything at least three or four times. Good news is you'll be really good at it when you're done. But uh, you're going to have a high level of frustration, and it's going to take you a lot longer than you think it is. But you'll have learned something when it's all done. So you got that. And if you didn't record it, you can always tell people it took you the first time. You know, that's up to you. You could do that. 
first try. Not bad. See how easy editing is. Anyway, fans on there. Everything went fine. Trout's on the way it's supposed to. Secure top, bottom like we want. Went ahead and put the upper radiator hose on. It looks good. The fins down there don't look terrible. I got a little. Oh, I'll show you what I got. This little contraption here. You just kind of run it with those blades, fins, whatever you want to call them. Straightens them back out. Worked really good. Did take some of the paint off. But everything straightened out looks really nice. So I'm pretty happy with it. It is what it is. It is definitely a learning experience. You hear the air compressor over here. Figure we probably ought to go ahead and start putting some work in on this tire. She's getting there, but it's gonna take her a, a while with the compressor that size. So I wanna go ahead and see if we can't get this lower radiator hose on there. This isn't exactly the one that came off, but it's pretty daggone close. I think we may have to trim it a little bit to get it to fit, but the 90s are, the bends should be in the right spot. We're gonna find out here. Oh man, now. I don't think that's gonna work. Looks like I'm gonna have to. I'll head to town tomorrow morning and pick up another radiator hose, see if we can get one that fits a little bit better. I'm just not super comfortable with that one. But I do think we can go ahead and try to set that nose cone on there. I just kind of going over everything, making sure I got everything under here on the bottom side done before I put this cone on, the shrouds on, holes on, bolts are on. I did grease both those U joints on that hydraulic pump shaft that comes out. Those are both greased and, and they look pretty good too actually. No play or anything in them. But we do have to slide, if I remember correctly, if only I would have recorded it and put it on YouTube. I think I gotta get this in first before the nose cone goes in. Uh, I believe it goes this way. Yeah it does, that's right, I remember. Must go the other way, alright. Way to shake the memory confidence. That way. Yep. It's happy there. I'm hoping the 755 can get that cone high enough to set it down in here for us. Oh, that'd make things a lot easier if we could. If not, I'll just make a little jib real quick. It wouldn't take much. I think it doesn't weigh a crazy amount. Oh, I need a big old extension. There we go. Set that nose cone in here, on here, however you want to look at it. All right. Oh, we're frozen to the ground. <laughs> oh, goodness.
as it doesn't slide left or right on us or get caught on anything crazy like this frozen grass. We're just gonna go nice and slow. We may have to hop off a few times, but we'll do whatever we gotta do. still on that's good that's crucial cool. I'm gonna drop down just a little bit just roll just a little bit and then we're gonna we'll back up a tad and you got all the doors in the way so good luck to you. Well that's got weight off of it anyway. We, we'll still have to scoot it around I'm sure but it's up there and pretty close to where it needs to be. nose cone is up in place and if I remember correctly um, hold on a second no nope. we do we got to bolt that we do have to put a bolt right there on each side and then that bolt runs through the counterweight and runs through that hole there to hold it in place so I think I want to do those two front ones first to kind of lock her in place and then we'll uh, slide that counterweight up, see if we can get it wrestled up. I'm honestly just thinking the floor jack on that. I'm sure this little screwdriver's okay. All right. Well, that did better than I expected. There we go. Okay. Let me get my ratchet and we'll get those ran in. So my goal is to get each side walked up. Probably have to use a ratchet strap to secure one side once it's kind of sitting up on top of that axle. Get the other side up and then we'll kind of work towards the bolts. Let's crib that a little higher. Maybe we can get the jack under there a little better there. Oh, looky there. Nice shot, bud. Up we go. Okay. Well, I say let's uh let's just crib that. I think so. Not against that situation at all. I don't think it looks terrible. It's coming up pretty good. I'm gonna give a, a tug on this strap and just see if we can't get her to pull back for us. Falling all the way off the jack. There we go. There's the... There. Oh. 
There we go. I don't need that to stay there though. So. I'm gonna come back down and see if I can get that hole in there to line up for me. I have both those in on the other side. I never took both out, so I need to. Oh, I guess I gotta go up higher on the front for that to happen. Well, so I can just pivot that maybe. Might be able to. Yeah, that feels right. We can get one started in there. I can't actually see it though. It's a little bit. There it goes. So pulling that plate over. I gotta get that out of there so I can get that bolt through. Okay. Looks like we're getting pretty close there. Actually, I think I can get this bottom one easier. Yeah. Got this one started right here. Oh, so close. So close. Results may vary. All right. All right, get my tools picked up here. Should do it. We'll go ahead and grab my gloves so we can get those dried off at the house. Right. So we got all these snugged up, tightened up. They look great, feel great. Pretty excited about that. Actually went smoother than I expected. I thought that put up a pretty good fight. And uh, overall, no complaints there. Of course, snugged up on this side. So we're down to the hydraulic tank, getting those connections made back. Side counterweights, which won't be bad. We'll just take the log tongs and the 755 and slide those into place. Shouldn't be too terrible. Of course, then all the random intake stuff, the exhaust, and getting all the wiring hooked up on the alternator. And then filling everything with fluids. And trying to get this lower radiator hose to work better for us. And switching that oil pressure line over to copper. Still got to do that too. I'm working on this thing tomorrow, which means your next video will be right back on this. Probably the next two videos will be on this. Hopefully the last video will just be us using it and burning some brush out in the woods so I need to get cleaned up. Again, I want to thank Area Diesel Service for hooking us up on the water pump and the radiator. Pretty excited about that. Those guys are awesome. Seriously, they truly, truly are. I turn down partnerships all the time because I'm just really picky about people that I meet and uh, those guys rock. So definitely give them a shout if you need any diesel needs. Again, they specialize in like fuel injectors and rebuilding fuel injectors and new fuel injectors and injection pumps and turbos and things like that. And I'm just thinking out loud, but I wonder if you could put a turbo on this or the 755. Tractor Time with Tim did a turbo on his compact and I got to do an engine rebuild on that 755 this coming winter because she's just well, she's just getting to that point in her life. And maybe a turbo on that rig would be kind of fun. Now we're just thinking out loud. I want to thank those guys. I want to thank you guys for watching and all the support. And I'm going back. The girls wanted ice cream because 
Well, that makes sense. So I'm going to do that and hang out with them the rest of the day, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.